thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with all of you. Um, we're from the International School Augsburg, and we're located um, just a little bit north of Munich, but we're a school as well as an organization. And I think that's what's really exciting um, in terms of both um, for those who are looking to be investors, as well as those who are looking to have a good education program for their children. Um, our school is really focused on learning for the future. We are an IB world school, which means the International Baccalaureate. And with that, we, we have a strong curriculum that is recognized globally, um, and it provides opportunities for students to attend university around the world, um, but also to be able to have access if they're younger to reintegrate into national programs as well. Um, part of what we do is beyond just the academic structure though. So it's not just the learning and the development that we have of the children's mind, it's also for their body and their, their, their soul, if you will, their character. Um, so we focus quite a lot on the IB Learner Profile and you can see in the photo here, these are the different characteristics that we really in, encourage that students will have as they move forward. Our vision for the school um, really is this, and it's, it's as part of our um, role as an ESG, we look at the fact that we see, we care, we act. And this is something that we truly do live. And it's something that is student friendly and students are able to actually follow and develop. But we, across the school, focus on environmental sustainability. We look at how as an organization, we can be sustainable, not only in what we do and how we do it, but additionally with just the thinking about how it supports and interacts with each other as well. Uh, Marcus will speak a little bit more about how we focus on this from the economy of the common good um, perspective, but we actually try to live this talk um, in what we do here at ESA. So looking after the planet, one another and ourselves really is a part of what we spend our time thinking about how we can continue to improve. Um, if you can see from the beginning, we started back in 2005 and um, we had one founding head of school um, who has been here for some time and she's really been able to have a very strong impact across. I was able to come in from 2022 onward. But what we see is that when we started from 63 students uh, back in 2005, we're now at over 375 students and we're continuing to grow. So it's an exciting development that we've had in a fairly short amount of time. And we're looking at even continuing our growth, as you can see, into the school year 27, 28, into a new campus. So again, this is part of our journey uh, when it comes to not just as a school and an education program, but as a public company as well. What this means in terms of who we are, uh, you can see that we have a strong IB diploma program. Our results are typically above average um, each year. And we have students then going off around the world. Many do stay within the EU, um, but then as an, a pool of alumni, we have a, close to 350 alumni already. Uh, we're very excited to see the kind of developments that they're having in the future and the growth and the investment that they have in the world around them as well, which is just a demonstration of, of really what we're doing as an educational program. Our staff members, um, both teaching and our admin staff are at 89, and we come really from all around the world as well, as you can see with 28 different nationalities. Um, as a representation of our school, we also have shareholders. And I think this is one of the most exciting parts, and, and this is something that Marcus put into place um, from the beginning, was the idea that our graduating students become shareholders. So our alumni are part of our shareholder community. And it's really exciting because then they are able to take not only care for the fact that mentally um, and sort of socially they feel connected to our school, but also financially and fiscally as well. So it's, it's an important element for this. We also have parents, we have companies, uh, we have a variety of different people who um, and, and groups who are involved as shareholders. And I think this is a powerful way of giving back and sharing information about who we are, what we value, and what we want for our school. Um, so in terms of the school, it is a very significant role for the greater Augsburg area. Um, as an organization, we do submit ourselves to a strong uh, representation of accreditation. So we are um, accredited by 
the Council of International Schools. Um, and we are also recognized as a top innovator um, from one of the first schools in Germany to be nominated um, in 2021 for this um, award. And we also partner very closely with Google. We are a Google reference school. And this means that we use the Google platform and we are very collaborative across the board in all different areas um, to be able to, to meet the needs of our students, our staff, and then our admin teams we're all using the same process. Additionally, as we go back to our vision statement of looking after the planet, we have been carbon neutral since 2022, and I think it's very powerful. And um, as part of that, we also represent what the students are doing as an eco school member. So we're very excited about this as well. We have a variety of different companies um, that either support us as part of our Friends of ESA community or are represented through admissions um, because they are supporting some of their staff um, or staff members' children uh, to be able to come to the school. So we are, are proud to have a wide variety of support um, from around the area. And we are looking to continue this, especially as we're moving toward the new campus. The As a shareholder, um, those who are education shareholders, they are able to understand really the fact that as a school and as um, a corporation, we're, we're walking this balance and we have a sense of a global community. Um, one of our phrases that we, we also live is the idea of learning to be me in a global community with over 40 different, um, sorry, 35 different nationalities represented here at our school. Um, it's an exciting place to be in a, in a small world really within here. So it's our global microcosm. And this helps students and even staff and even parents have a good understanding of what the future will be like when it's more global, more interactive in this way. Our students, when they leave us, are able to have a certificate that is um, recognized by the German government as well with the Mittelreife, as well as the um, an equivalent to the Abitur. And that will allow them access either within Germany or um, around the world, depending on the, the results of their final exams. And so those who are shareholders of ESA are able to be part of this and to contribute not only to what we're doing here in Augsburg, but also around the world as we have our students who go out and make the world a better place. I'll turn it over so, now to Marcus. So I'm happy to continue with, the, with our potential for the future. And I think uh, a little bit what Jess already just described is already hinting at our potential for the future because um, we are the only international school in the greater Augsburg area um, and there are only five of us in Bavaria and another two in, in Munich so we are um, in, um, focusing on international mobile families as well and um, therefore strongly also on companies as you already saw um, the companies listed with whom we cooperate. Looking at the, at the greater Augsburg area, because um, we are in the international forum, um, we might have to have a lo little look at what Augsburg means. And this is the economic area of Augsburg. So it also defines the potential of an international school and the international mobili mobile families within, a, within an economic area. And as you can see, um, the greater Augsburg area is almost up to 700,000 people. Um, has an, all, an excellent quality of life and working environment, and it already it also develops into a really technology hub in the close to Munich. Um, gains a lot of Munich, of course, as you can imagine, as um, Munich in the meantime is rather crowded. Augsburg, just half an hour away, <clears throat> really uh, benefits from the fact that it's so close to Munich. And as you can see, there's a lot going on in Augsburg itself um, as a as a, um, a technology center. So we are rather strong in environmental technologies, aeronautics. We have, uh, for example, Airbus helicopters as a company you might have seen on the list beforehand. Um, and um, it's another medical faculty in Bavaria, which is one of the only two um, medical, me medical faculties which have been founded in the last few years all over Germany. So um, the state is spending almost one and a half billion euros um, in this greater environment of the me medical university, uh, which from which we also think um, ESA can benefit a lot in the future. 
Um, looking at the economic area, you can see we are very close to the Alps, of course, as well. Uh, Austria, Switzerland, Switzerland are rather close. Munich is half an hour, as I said. <clears throat> Here you can also see already the Innovation Park of Augsburg, which extends the university, um, which, also, which is also a rather um, unique setting that there's so much space for a technology innovation park close to, the, to an university. And on the left-hand side, you can see the the um, medical faculty which of about which I just talked about. Um, so that creates the potential we see for our school. And um, if you look at it, uh, we did a potential analysis. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. I'll talk about that a little bit later, the, the new building project. Uh, for this building project, of course, we, we, did a re we did a research with an expert. And um, as you can see, the expert, the company Bree, um, Bre, whatever you call it, um, <clears throat> German company, um, the result of this um, um, evaluation is that there's a potential of up to 621 students in the long run or whatever uh, uh, future holds in the after 2035. 20, 20, but we're planning at the moment for 550 students in the, in the future. And of course, um, there's a lot of potential in other facilities like childcare, early childcare. Child care. At the moment, um, we missed to say that um, international schools cater for children from three up to 18. So it's basically uh, what you call a normal school, but also in German, we would say a kindergarten. But of course, it's not a kindergarten. It's a preschool. And uh, this starts, so the PYP primary years program starts for children from three up to grade five. Um, boarding is another, another interesting topic. And um, as you saw, Augsburg is quite a big, in the meantime, quite a, a big, has quite a big expanse. Um, so the south of, of Augsburg isn't really, isn't really um, covered yet. Um, so, um, um, so there might be the possibility for expanding in the greater Augsburg area with a lower school um, in, in the south of Augsburg. But there are also cities in, 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 only in Bavaria, like Würzburg, which, which, which will have the potential for an international school, which could be, uh, in the long run, the potential also for us. Which leads us to the next topic, um, how we see our, um, how we want to realize our vision. Um, and of course, we did it for a very long time, sustainable and profitable. And uh, of course, we are trying to continue this um, sustainable and profitable course with a new green campus. Um, so the idea is we are in the process of planning our new school campus, um, which will be the home for our vision, for our future. And as you can see, rather very well connected. Augsburg Center close by, uh, Munich rather rather close, even the center of Munich only 45 minutes away, and the new medical faculty I mentioned only 10 minutes away. Um, we are planning to, to invest around about 42 million euros. Um, I think it's also important to talk about this um, at the now, because at, at the later stage in the presentation, you will see how this impacts company value, um, because, of course, 42 million um, we can't, as a small company, we are not able to manage ourselves, um, but we have access as a um, 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 school, private school, to public subsidies, as you can see, between 21, 22, up to 24 million euros. That's also the financing model for the new campus, um, which... Um, um, is combined for, uh, with uh, public subsidies, as I said, um, our own capital, mezzanine capital. So we're at the moment emitting a, a convertible bond as well uh, of 3 million euros. So we are actually at the state of um, own capital around about um, um, 8 million euros. Um, and the, the rest is covered by loans and donations, hopefully. Um, and... Uh, this is how our story was um, for uh, getting to this point. As you can see, we started off with a, with a 50,000 euros non-profit GmbH, GmbH in 2005, a special German uh, legal structure for a company and uh, converted into the 
um, stock exchange listed nonprofit public uh, limited co corporation in 2017 with up to uh, with an equity now of 5.5 million euros um, since the stock um, since the IPO. Um, also, the development and of, of the existing companies contributed to to the growth of a steady growth of the total assets and the balance sheet. So that uh, at the moment we are at round about 10.3 million euros of um, in, in the balance sheet assets. Um, how does the actual um, asset situation, is, is the actual asset situation allocated? Um, our base capital is 4.65 million euros. Uh, we own the actual compass um, and um, which has been evaluated as well. Both buildings have been evaluated by specialists. Um, just a few a while ago, as you can see, in 2023 uh, and 2024. Um, and these um, assets sum up to 7.2 million euros of total real estate assets. Even the, you can even see it in, in our, um, the sustainability of the financial sustainability of our development. You can even see in our um, annual operating results or the continuous growth of our revenue. You can see we started with less than a million and uh, we're now up to 7.3 million in the actual school year. Um, and uh, I'm also involved in, in a startup business. I haven't seen that many uh, startup companies which were um, um, positive from the very beginning with their annual operational results. Um, ESA was since the very beginning, um, with the only um, exception of uh, two years where the subsidies have been, the whole subsidy structures in 2011 and 12 have, has been um, changed and, and the payments for the subsidies came later in, in the next year so that this uh, caused uh, a little dip. In, in these two years, but otherwise, as you can see from the very beginning, a sustainable and profitable growth of the company. And now I I'm, I'm, uh, would like to present you our education share as a real ESG impact investment, because I think there's a lot of talk about ESG and a lot of statistics about ESG, but if you go back to the reality, um, I think, there's very little left, and therefore I'm really happy to present something which is real ESG and real impact. Um, so as an ESA shareholder, is the investment is not only future-oriented or sustainable in accordance with the SDG standards, which is, by the way, also confirmed by the GBC with, her, the, with their latest research, as you can see here. So we fulfill... Um, almost all, well, basically all 17 UNESCO sustainability goals with our business model. But also, as Jess said at the very beginning, for us, the IB learner profile, of course, is the core for being a sustainable and um, an impact investment because we think and we are convinced to generate those students and those people for the future who think in ESG and think in SDG standards and will change the world in the long run. So looking at the ESG standards, of course, a very a core ESG standard is the environmental one. And uh, um, if you look at this and our um, home for our vision, you can see we're trying to reconstruct an old concrete school building um, close by. It's not far away from our actual a compass and with, which will save um, hundreds of tons of carb, carbon dioxide and will be um, certified um, envi environmentally certified. Not everybody knows the German um, association who certifies um, environmentally friendly buildings, but that's the G DGNB, DGNB. Um, and of course, it will be at least uh, carbon neutral. Um, hopefully, we get it carbon positive. Um, with these principles, as you can see, the Green School Campus Project, minimizing building energy consu consumption, uh, maximizing energy efficiency, 
using renewables and storage system. We're working together with a, a startup company in storages and in, in storaging, storing electricity, which uses um, second life car batteries to store energy, which is, uh, of course, a very environmentally friendly uh, approach um, to electricity storing. Um, and at the same time, we are a, a eco school certified from, a, from the school side of things as an eco school and carbon neutral, as we mentioned it, since 2022, um, following and balancing the whole thing with our common good reporting, um, which I might talk on the next slide about it. Um, so as you heard from Chess already, um, we are um, an international school and international schools are typically, typically have to be typically accredited uh, with um, international organizations. So our main um, um, and core um, accreditation is the CIS accreditation, which looks at the school as a whole. It's like a quality management system for schools an internationally uh, in the, um, worldwide system, um, as well as our pedagogical um, um, quality control, if you want to say so, um, the IB. And for the Mittler der Reife, as Jess already said at the very beginning, um, we uh, emit um, Cambridge uh, certificates, the um, IGCSEs, um, with which um, students gain the Mittler der Reife. We are, of course, also accredited by the Bavarian State um, Ministry of Education and Culture. So this is uh, all about um, um, governance as well. Of course, as a um, stock exchange-based company, we have um, uh, tax consultants and auditors, Sonderg and Partner. We are a member of the FNG, and um, we are using the balancing sheet of the economy for the common good to analyze um, our impact um, as a company as a whole. Um, you, and it's an equivalent, if you don't know the economy for the common good, it's an equivalent to the B Corp um, um, model, something in this, in this direction. But it looks at social governance like the ESG standards and balances, um, and we can balance and record um, how we're doing in these um, areas. We also um, are part of the Charta der Vielfalt. This is Germany's diversity initiative, German-wide initiative. And for a very long time, we partnered with an association uh, from some San Paquita in Zambia. Um, of course, Corona was a little bit of a dip for us, but nevertheless, um, I think um, we, for many years, we cooperated and will con continue to cooperate um, with them in the future. Um, now a few words about um, how our um, how you can make profit from an ESA investment, because I think um, many of you or some of you might ask yourself, well, why, how, how can I make profit with, with a um, uh, non-profit um, association or company at the stock exchange? Uh, from our perspective, um, there are two, uh, two ways to make profit um, with us. Uh, the first way is um, a short-term one or a continuous one. Um, which is the convertible bond, which we are emitting at the moment. It's a 3% interest rate with almost five years runtime. So I think that's at the moment that the, looking at the conversion rates or the, the not the conversion rates, but the um, ratios uh, from the EZB or the um, 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 banks, I think rather attractive. And in the long run, we're trying to raise um, our company value. Uh, and uh, here we also have an interesting um, um, example like the Berlin Zoo, which is a not non-for-profit company, raises their, the share price of this company rose from 2010 to 2020 by 193%. And why is that? Because we're focusing on um, comp corporate val value compared to a normal uh, public limited company for profit. As you can see, um, the non-profit public limited company has a lot of money left to invest and to gain more and develop the a company value faster than other, which means so last five minutes. So I'm trying to getting a little bit faster. Um, so which means that our shareholders benefit from firstly tax relief and no the no dividends are definitely um, in in a, in a certain extent um, an advantage because we are able to invest more. Um, there are there are additional resources for revenue like subsidies, donations, etc. 
And of course, we are investing, we are a secure investment because we, we invest in buildings and in real estate typically a lot. Um, which shows where ESA as an investment, can, how ESA can be compared to others. You can see here um, the, the relation between profit and ESG impact. And um, typically not-for-profit institutions have a low profit, but a high impact or high ESG rating. Um, For-profit companies have a high, typically higher profit, obviously, and um, but less um, ESG impact. And from that perspective, I think ESA is well positioned um, right in the corner um, where it should be. Um, last but not least, then I'm done, or then we are done. Um, we have a statement of our, from the last few days, we had a um, Oktoberfest, our own Oktoberfest, um, and we had the Bavarian Minister for Digital Affairs. Um, and this is what he said about the school, which also shows what the value for the school of the school for the for the greater Augsburg area is seen even by the Bavarian government. And uh, yeah, that's more or less um, very fast, every, um, as much as possible about us. And we're happy to answer um, questions if there are. Excellent. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, currently there are no questions in the chat, but uh, the viewers are welcome to post any questions they have. So first of all, on my side, how do you plan to manage the anticipated growth in student enrollment while maintaining the high standard of education uh, at ESA? I think part of what we do is because we have the IB diploma program and the IB primary years mm -hmm. program, and we use this in terms of our um, organization, not only of the curriculum, but of what expectations we have for students, um, we're able to ensure that we are providing a solid curriculum that is reviewed and is um, developed appropriately. The other part of what we do is we do work with each student and we have quite a lot of individual support um, or in small group support. So we come back to the idea that we said in our mission statement, we see, we care, we act, and we really keep a focus on individual students and the needs that they have so that their pathways will be successful. Um, we don't require that everyone exits our school with an IB diploma. We have opportunities for them to be able to be successful in other ways, um, but we do have a development of our curriculum that even if we were to grow larger, we have options of courses, we have options of um, continued learning uh, programs for these students um, to be able to take should there be a need. You also, you also, I think your focus also was on growth. How we are we are able to manage um, school quality on uh, if we grow. But um, as you can see, we grew. If you look at one of the last slides, um, we are already um, at a. I don't know if I find it quickly enough. I, I think it was at the potential on the potential sli slide here. Um, oops, wrong direction. Um, it was here, I think. Um, as you can see, our our development is already above what we predict, what we got predicted by the by the potential analysis. And even on this small campus, we are able um, to work on our um, on our name and, and the quality of the education. We think with a big campus, um, we are easily managed uh, able to manage um, more students on an even higher level of education. <laughs> 